Travelers, this is Rose from Travel's Point of View and I'm here in my new camper. So recently I bought a new uh, Peugeot G5 camper van uh, which I'm gonna use for touring through Europe. So there's a few things you need to pay attention when you're buying a camper. So uh, I want to make you uh, make this video just for people are buying for campers, looking for camper vans or uh, you want to make a backpack camper van yourself. There's a few things you need to pay attention before you buy it. Um, of course, everything um, the uh, mechanical needs to be sound. So uh, I'll show you guys under the hood in a minute uh, that everything needs to be good. So uh, the, the belt needs to be reasonably to be changed. It only lasts for 60, 70,000 kilometers. So if that is not uh, up to date on uh, if that's not up to date uh, recently, then it breaks down and if it breaks down, your whole engine is gone. Or you have a system just like me, which just only give your, uh, in, your, your gas inside of your, your, your motor. And if that then it breaks, you, you're not gonna go anywhere because you don't have any diesel coming in your, in your motor, but it doesn't tear down your whole motor system. So, which is really really nice so they have to pay a bit attention to that of course you have to check your oil and uh, any um, previous uh, repairs or previous accidents and you have to make everything is straight and sound uh, yeah just have to check the history of the car uh, if there's any damage or something like that or you need to be concerned about next step I'll you have to stop in in, in the camper and you have to drive yourself of course and while driving just pay attention if it's like pulling to one side because like I had a camper van uh, we were looking at and it was really pulling to the right side and when I checked the tires as well it was just completely bald the right tire it was terrible and the left tire it had so much grip still on it so it is really really important that uh, that you check that like it can be really easily sorted out if by outlining your car for example but it can also be really big problems underneath it as well if you if you had an accident and your whole chest is just <laughs> wrecked so be careful when you do that like check with, with the preview with the buyer uh, why it's like going that way direction I did not buy that you know, Pacific camper van it also had a little bit more things uh, to it also, when you're driving, um, just make sure like a lot of these old camper vans doesn't have uh, power steering. So going on easy on turns and going easy on the uh, take your time with the turns because we have to turn a lot with, the, with no power steering, right? Uh, this one also has like a rear view camera, which is really nice, especially with these campers because you can't really use the camper van. A bit very maybe in the in the camper van because everything's blocked. Um, make sure it sounds right. Doesn't have any funny noises. The B uh, string is not really really bad. Um, so it's like a lot of things mechanically uh, we can check. Uh, if you're not mechanically yourself, you can always ask a mechanic to come with you or a friend that actually has knowledge about the camper vans to come with you. Uh, I definitely do recommend that to do that because I have no clue either. I just ask a friend of mine uh, who has a bit more knowledge than me about this. And about the steering wheel, because most of these camper vans has a little bit different steering than normal. So I'm just putting the clutch. So this is like a uh, wheel based uh, gear shift. So this is now in one, and you have to pull two or just two, and then three four and five and then the back here is in reverse so, yeah so the, it's just a little bit of a use to to driving this kind of steering wheel it's easy repeating them it's crazy if you know it but it is something you have to get used to it and then I have on this as well uh, adjust, adjustable uh, air suspension which is really nice if you are a little bit overloaded or something like that, that you can adjust 
by pumping it a little bit up or pump it a little bit down is what you prefer like don't pump over three four bar because you will wreck it then and that is not good for the air suspension either also i always think personally opinion uh, it's really nice to have a USB plug in your radio station. These radio fronts are really cheap. You can get like for 40, 50 euros and you have a USB charge as well. I use it for charging my phone while I used it for Google Maps. So I definitely recommend it. We also have your, of course, your trigger plug. So you can also put that in addition to two more um, USB chargers, chargers are in there. At this uh, camper van does not come with air conditioning, sadly. So we have rolled up windows. <laughs> it's not bad, it's not too bad. Next to it, we also have I don't know if you can really see is the rear view mirror. So it's got a little camera. I have to start it, I don't have my keys with me, of course. Um, but it gives you a little camera shot about the rear view mirror because if you can see, like, see this little bit that's the only see what I can see from my rear view mirror it's not enough uh, to drive over the road so I have of course two seats this seat can turn around all the way that is really nice if you have more company coming around uh, the, the driver's seat can't do that also it's really nice to have uh, leaning arms and curtains all around it so you can block in the light out when you go to sleep. And this is the living area. So when you're looking at the living area, it's really important that you test every single item on the camper van before you buy it. So just make sure that everything works, there's not disgusting water coming out of it or anything that is broken with it, it starts leaking somewhere, check everything, especially water. If it leaks, it's just so much trouble. So I'm just showing you really quickly around, sorry. So this is my bed. We call it an alcove bed. Uh, it's just basically saying that you sleep above the driving seat. <laughs> it is really important that you don't buy too thick of a mattress because it is just a little space between it. And if you buy this really thick, 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 thick mattress, you have no place to turn around in and you just start bumping your head and it's just really ugly. Uh, it's a 14 centimeter mattress on it right now. And even now I think it's a little bit maybe too much, but if you go to Lille and you have to sleep on it for a year, it, it is a little bit of a give or take kind of thing. Um, if it's too, if you go to only for like a couple of weeks, it's not really big of a deal if you get like a, seven to ten inch uh, seven to ten centimeter uh, mattresses that you can definitely sing that out but um, you can definitely sleep on that but for a whole year I wanted to have a little bit more solid and therefore also a little bit less space also what's really nice it is like a, a window I can open above my hat which in summer times I would be really happy <laughs> I have three windows I can't you can't really see it there so I have three windows, one behind me, one in the front, and then one over here. So it gives a lot of light and maybe excellent views if you're standing on amazing spots. Next to it, we have the dining area. We, I have a lot of storage space in this camper van and this table can come down and I have an additional uh, two person bed. And up here, I have three compartments where I can store all my stuff, which is nice. And another cabinet over here. And underneath it, I have a radio. Woohoo! So this is a separate radio from my um, radio at the front. It does also go on a different um, battery. It goes on a different uh, battery than my, my driving one. Otherwise, it just sucks to dry your battery of the engine and then you can't start it. It's a little bit sucky. But I'm plugged in now, so we also have a, how we call it, a household uh, battery. So these uh, and all my appliances are going over my household battery. Please check that if it's also okay. 
because you don't want to have a dead battery sitting in there and then you can't start anything so that way it's also really important to start everything um this is an 89 camper van so it's almost 30 years old so it comes with some issues <laughs> if i have to say like that but before that we have also a very nice bathroom it's just a simple clean bathroom you will not know how many dirty 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 campers i have seen um, but this is just nice and clean it's really important as well just check on the cracks in the ground if like the oh that's not better if there is like a cracks in, in the floor or cracks on the toilet or whatsoever you don't want to clean up that kind of stuff also check if it's the water is running if there is anything loose everything works i have some um some power plugs in there so make sure that it works as well because rewiring everything this is just so much work then we are now in the kitchen kitchen time so this is the kitchen this is the gas stove so we have a three pit gas stove and it is really important you light every single one of them because i only light the two and didn't do light the third and the third one was actually a bit messy so the third one this one i did not light stupid me um actually came out of a lot of uh, yellow flames and actually also in the side so it was like just burning everywhere and it burns the, ar the hair of my arms and my dad's arms off um so yeah we had to fix it it was just a mixture of too much air in the gas lines and it needs to be fixed but you have to know those kind of things and same is with the boiler i just don't think that is the one thing we still didn't repair i actually didn't even saw this little button when i was buying it um so yeah just make sure that this is working as well it's nice to have hot water when you're camping it's not so much of a big deal you can also boil water on the gas stove but still right then the water the water is also important oh. I have my, here my control panel, so this is just the lights above it that I don't need on the moment because it's light side. This is for the water pump, it's pumping water into my taps. This is basically saying if this is going to go over the motor battery or my household battery. So I have now my household battery, in the center is off and then top is my um, motor battery. So we don't want to do that because then you get stranded but just in the case of emergency i really 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 need it i don't know also this little warning light will give you a warning if it goes on the 10 volt then we have this little switch that does basically the same thing um but then for your water and now it's pumping so that way it's now in yellow uh it will turn green shortly after that but but the water pump takes so much energy from it it does that and then we have our general 12 volt so we have like these hidden little power blocks everywhere where i can put a appliance from 12 volt on it and then you have the sink sink is really important i bought one with a leaky tab it's working fine now but it works fine like that and then i opened my drawer and it was just completely filled with water i'm like oops so we have replaced the tab and now it's working perfectly fine um, but yeah that, just a little note uh, when you buy uh, a new camper that you check that check the drawer on the needed as well hey so this is our fridge well my fridge on the moment but our fridge soon it's really easy you just pull up the plug here that's a little plug and you can open it so there's this very small uh, freezing compartment, but doesn't really matter. It's hold off for like a couple of ice blocks or popsicles or frozen veggies, whatever you like. Then it's enough room for all your groceries. So the only thing is with this kind of stuff, um, it can go on electricity and on gas. So please make sure that work on both because the fridge is going to be your main cost of this. Oh, I'll just turn it off for a second because I have now open. So this is going to be your main energy puller or your gas consumption from. 
So to start the gas, this, for example, is just useless. So we're gonna just forget about that. I don't think it's hooked up to anything. And if I figure it out, I'll let you guys know. Start up the gas, you put it on zero. You pull in a little, you, of course you're gonna turn on the gas right now, uh, which I'm not gonna do on the moment. And you put it on max and you start pressing this button a couple of times. And then in the end, you would see a blue little flame right there. It's a little bit around the corner, so it's a bit hard to see. Um, but yeah, it also just um, shows you how to manage your, your temperature in the fridge. So max is really cold, minimum is really a bit warmer, etc, etc, right? It speaks for itself. But you can also use it on electric. So when you're driving, I'm just gonna close that because we don't need that. When you're driving, you probably want to go over your battery because it is automatically charging while you're driving. And up, now it's on 12 volt. And it keeps your, your stuff nice and cold inside. When you're standing still and you're hooked up on the power line, however, you probably want to switch this off because you don't want to strain your battery because it's really sucking your battery dry. Then this one says turn on and off. It's now on and it's so easy. And then you just adjust the, how you say, the cold temperature. And that's it. And now you wait until it's cold. In warm days, it takes a quite a lot of time. But on a cold days like this, it takes only like half an hour, 45 minutes. Next year, we like want to think about the, the heater, especially on these cold little days and especially in Holland, it's going to get to be really, really, really cold. So you'll be happy when you have a heater. So I will just show you how to do it. I have to crouch a little bit. So bear with me for a second. So this is my heater. It is a Trumatic SL3002 from 88. So this heater actually is 30 years old and still working fine actually. You just have to know most of these old heaters has a electric spark function. So you can remove this ha hatch and underneath it around here eh, there's a little apartment and there's like two double uh, A batteries in it. If you don't replace those after a certain while it, they are dead and your heater won't work. So this is a, just a very easy system you just Push it in, turn the knob, and then you hear the tick, 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 tick. That is your thing. And then you turn around, and then it lights up. And then you just adjust it how warm or how cold you want to have it. Also, I have a electric heater as well, just to cope with the cold on the moment. I'm plugged in in the, in the plug sport here right now. So I don't want to waste any gas if I don't want to. Because gas is not that expensive, but it's a bit hard to uh, obtain. So if I can run this over the electric current, it is a bit more easier. And plus, I can run my lava lamp then. So every uh, little 70 bots need a lava lamp and some Christmas decorations, some Christmas lights, to spark up this stuff. Of course, I have all my travel books in here because I need those in a couple of weeks. And it is just a really nice, cozy little home. Uh, and I really like it. So this is my little camper van. I hope you guys subscribe and follow my adventures coming soon.